what are genres? I always ask this, you know, and the way to think about it, genres is a simple category. And often genres are made up by various media industries. And the intent is to rationalize them. So something like graffiti, you know, which was a media coined term, you know, to describe writing or bombing. Um, you know, uh, terms like breakdancing to describe b-boy and b-girl and all that stuff, right? It's a way of rationalization, you know, um, of, of making an experience the same. So you know when you go to a CD store or you go online and you Google a category in Spotify or whatever it is and you type in gangster rap, you know you're going to get a certain type of product. Um, so it's a way of labeling, labeling things. It's a way of uh, guiding consumption too. Hey bud. Um, so the way, like, the way I think about that is, you know, a rationalized experience is you go to McDonald's. You know, every time you go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac, the idea is that the Big Mac is going to be kind of the same. You know, the same type of sauce, the same amount of pickles, you know, same type of cheese, you know, whatever. Uh, you go to Walmart anywhere in the country, right? And they're all kind of laid out the same. It's to make your consumption uh, and, and habits and practices easier. Same thing with a genre, you know? Um, so it's often about portraying, packaging, and branding, you know? Um, gangster rapper is used as a brand. It's used as a way to commodify, um, you know, someone. Get out of there, kitty. Um, you know, which is really important, you know, um, kind of within all of this, hey, dude, Jesus, <laughs> damn cats, uh, kind of within all this, you know, was the idea that specifically with gangster rap is that bad media attention is good media attention. I mean, you know, that whole age old adage that there's no such thing, you know, as bad press, um, you know, is something that really was kind of heightened and taken to the next level with gangster rap. Um, so in some ways it was, it's a gimmick, it's a marketing gimmick, it's a sales gimmick, it's something that's used to sell a particular product and to brand uh, a particular product. So. Um, the ironic thing is that gangster rap actually is partly what pushed um, rap in general uh, to the mainstream when we talk about, you know, it being a, a po possible fad or, you know, um, you know, is it economically viable as a genre, you know, rap or as a, you know, culture or whatever, uh, economically viable, you know, gangster rap made it. So that like indelibly was not going anywhere after, after NWA, who I believe I mean, they almost went 10, time, 10 times platinum in, in the U.S. It's 10 million copies, you know. Um, so what really made that happen? It was the media controversy uh, over the music, over the content of the lyrics. Um, you know, so the stuff that N.W.A. exploited, um, you know, the negative attention to, to lift itself, you know, into the mainstream, from the fringes to the mainstream, um, you know, it was really important here. So really like the, the act, um, you know, the, the music videos, you know, uh, the image of, I have this, you know, from, I don't know, maybe 89 watching Yo! MTV raps. I remember this vividly. And Fat Five Freddy is driving around Compton in the back of a truck with all the members of NWA, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, like, you know, the thing about gangster rap specifically is like no one thought there was a market for it. I mean, it existed for several years, um, you know, conceptually, but no one thought it would sell, that there was an audience for it, you know, and they found the audience, which is largely white, white people. That's kind of the audience that, that, it, that it found. Um, but I think it's, it's something, you, you know, you really should think about is that um, you know, in the 80s, rap was not free speech. Um, you know, other forms of music had free speech, um, you know, involved in it. You know, you could kind of say what you want, but here's a, a music genre that comes out as a product, as a commodity, 
and motherfuckers are trying to censor rappers, trying to censor rappers, you know, and this group, Two Live Crew, actually had to go to the Supreme Court to fight for freedom of speech in rap music. So, I mean, that's something that y'all are so far from, you know, but these people had to go to court, to the Supreme Court, to fight for the ability to say what you want to say on a rap record, um, particularly. So how, you know, backwoods, how racist, how bullshit is that? So if you read the chapter by Watts, um, or, or could read the chapter by Watts, you know, the real thing I wanted you to tease out of that was this notion of a spectacular consumption. Um, and basically, the kind of the concept here and what Watts talks about in relationship is the gangster rap is you're consuming the spectacle. You're consuming, you know, um, the hyper reality of what's going on. You're, cons you're consuming not the reality. You're consuming this concocted, constructed, um, hyper real, you know, quote unquote, reality like uh, a lot of people like nwa and whatnot said you know we were just telling these you know these stories about what's going on but they they put that you know hollywood touch on it um which is the spectacle spectacle so what watts is basically saying he uses this um you know this argument or this idea that debord this guy this french dude debord had that basically what happens is the sign um, becomes greater than what it signifies, meaning like um, what a sign and sign, you know, and signified means is like you see a tree and you think of all the things that you associate with a tree, whether it's air, whether it's you know nature, whether you, the word you know uh, tree makes you think of all of the the above, the image of a tree. So what I'm saying is, you know, the sign you know, of gangster rap, the image of gangster rap and gangster rappers becomes, you know, what's more important than what it actually represents or is supposed to represent, which is gangster culture, gang bang and, and all that. It becomes greater than the reality, it becomes hyper real. And so what the board and what Watts tries to say is that, you know, we consume the spectacle. This is created through the, the media, the mass media, and we consume the spectacle, not the reality. Like so many people that bought into gangster rap, that bought into the media hype, whether they were against it or for it, trying to censor it, whatever, you know, they consumed the spectacle. And guess what? They're part of the spectacle. The people who, who spoke out against gangster rap, who, who protested it, you know, all these things, like they, pr they helped produce, they, want, they made it so it sold more. That controversy made it so it sold more. What young kid doesn't want more uh, gangster rap or rap when their parents say you can't listen to that? I mean, they, they made Ice-T, you know, take his album, his Body Count album off the shelves and take off the song Cop Killer because they thought it would make uh, people go out and kill cops. We all know that's dumb. <laughs> you know, that don't, that don't add up. The math don't add up there, you know.